Hi, this is Bob Costas, and you're listening to the ML Sports Platter. The ML Sports Platter is back with you all over the major platforms like Spotify, Google, Apple, Stitcher, Deezer, anywhere else you get your podcasts on the smartphone device, on the Droid, on the Apple phones, etc. And please do download and subscribe and leave some feedback and a five-star review for this podcast and all of our others under the Brawl Network. You can get me on Twitter at Mike L Sports and of course at Network Brawl for all of our podcasts and uh, the team doing a tremendous job. We're actually going to bring somebody on from the Brawl Network right now who covers Alabama in just a moment. That would of course be our big pal, our Bama Brawl pal, Adam Raymer uh, here in a second. But quickly, the ML Sports Platter is brought to you by Welch & Company Jewelers, Barks & Rec Doggy Daycare, Hides of Liverpool, and our great friends over at the Vince Aguirre Consulting Group. Log on today to vcgtransforms.com. That's vcgtransforms.com. Become a better leader both personally and professionally. And I should also give a very, very strong shout-out to our good buddies at Stanley Law, our title sponsor. It's always personal with Stanley Law. Make sure you log on to stanleylawoffices.com. You can talk with someone from the dedicated team no cost to you, no strings attached, the workplace injury, the personal injury, social security disability, all there at stanleylawoffices.com. That's stanleylawoffices.com. Stanley Law Offices, together, they'll work to get you the maximum award. Well, I cannot wait to chat Alabama, SEC, a little NFL draft. What a time of year it is, of course, gearing up for where guys are going to go. It seems like everybody's puking out 400 mock drafts a day. Let's bring him in. He's the creator and host of Bama Brawl for the Brawl Network, which is uh, what I'm a part of now. It's super, super fun. And uh, he is an SEC insider. He covers Alabama football, you name it. Hashtag Roll Tide. Man, I'll tell you what, all you have to do is put that on a video. You get a couple thousand more views, and that's exactly what happened to me not too long ago, Adam Raymer. Welcome in, and you can get Adam at Adam Raymer, the number 11, Bama Brawl, the Brawl Network. Adam, welcome aboard, bud. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. So I'm, I'm wondering, you know, I kind of want to backtrack a little bit and recap some things that happened in the 2020 season for, for Alabama. Many feel that this was Saban's best team, his deepest team, the best Bama team <laughs> under his watch, which is like, really? I mean, could it, can it get any better? I actually agree with all those people in that camp and the way the offense was, the dynamic insertion of, of new plays. You know, Waddle goes down, Smith wins the Heisman, Matt Jones comes out of this this shell. At what point, first of all, I guess a two-part question. Number one, do you believe it's the best Saban team? And how you answer that will dictate the second part, which is when did you realize that this team was either A, the best team under Saban or, or pretty darn close? Well, I think uh, it's hard to say, man, if it's the best team or not. It really is. But in, in my honest opinion, I I think it was offensively, for sure. Um, defensively, probably not. Uh, we've had some pretty stout defenses on the – and the game has changed a lot in, in college football. Um, you know, it's it's almost like 48-45, baby. <laughs> yeah, it's a Pac-12 team. Every you know game. what I mean? Yep, yep. Every game is like a Pac-12 game now. Nobody and Saban hates it. I can tell you that he hates it. He he is old school and he wants to play defense and run the football and he wants a score of of, of ten to seven. You know, and he had to adjust to that and he's done a great job of it. But as far as the best team, I think offensively, yes. You know, we lose Jalen Waddle. Uh, I think it was the Tennessee game. I, I'm, I got to go back and look, but you know he was obviously an integral, integral part of our offense and just a huge playmaker on on the offensive side of the ball, whether it was special teams or lining up wide or and you know insert John Mechie, who no. if you're a Bama fan, you know who he is. If you're not a Bama fan, you probably don't know him. Um, and and just had a a career year, really. I'm not a career year, but a great year. And then, like you said, Devontae Smith oh. wins the Heisman. Um, I think they were offensively, yes. I'm going to disagree defensively, and mainly because we are really young on defense. Um, 
you look back at the the 2016 team probably and say that team was the most dominant defensive team in college football. Uh, but yeah, I think <laughs> it's hard to say, but I would say yes, offensively, defensively, no, but as maybe a whole, probably, yeah. I would agree. Well, the, the the thing that's hilarious is, you know, when you mentioned that Saban hates it and he's still adjusted, he still went to the modern era, he still inserted more slot receiver plays, he still said, screw it, spread it, 10 personnel, we're going to gun it, we're going to beat you 48-45. He may hate it, he may, he may not like the way the game is, but guess what? He adjusts and he's still beating the piss out of people. And so, you know... That's why he's the goat, brother. He, you're damn right he is. He, he really is. And, and I, I'm telling you right now, I know that there, you know, people argue the Bear Bryant, and they argue, um, you know, they argue many other head coach. They argue, argue Urban Meyer. They argue, you know, I think it's Nick Saban. I think it's a drop. I think it's a big drop after Nick Saban. You know what he's done: winning at LSU, winning at Bama. Bama was not Bama until he got there. Um, no. And what they've and done. We've, we've, we've had several years of sure. frustration and struggles. I mean, yeah. uh, the comparison of Bear Bryant and Nick Saban is it's absurd. It's, compar- it, it's comparable, but if you look back when Bear Bryant and, and you know, it was a I, white game was, for him. <laughs> that and he could sign every five-star athlete he yeah. wanted to. Yep. And sit them on the bench. Correct. And not have to worry about scholarships. We get twenty-five scholarships a year. You know what I mean? Yep. Or, or however many it is, but. Saban can do that, and and I have people that that work with me, and um, that just general people when they see me in, at the supermarket or something, they're like, "Why do those kids want to go there um, and, and sit for two years?" Now here lately, we've kind of started playing freshmen and, and younger guys a little bit, but my my reason is, well, they want to win a championship or have a chance to, and second. They want to go to the NFL, yeah. And and, and they put. I, I'm pretty positive that Alabama has the most players active right now in the NFL. Yeah, it makes sense. So, I mean, the the thing that you know this team in 2020 with the modern era, all these offenses that you know the way the game is today and, and the shootout stuff. I mean. You can go back in time. You can look at teams that were more balanced. You can look at dominant defenses, maybe the teams that had just enough offense and could beat you 20-17 to 17 or beat you 13-10 or whatever, and that's nice. But if you take the offensive football of today and how it's evolved, and I understand that rules have benefited the offense both in, in college and the pros, the, the reality is you could take any defense all time, any defense, and it's almost impossible to stop or, or contain most offenses – in their respective league or their sport. I mean, for as great as the Steel Curtain was, how would they handle a spread offense of Kansas City, right? How I mean, how would Alabama how how would Alabama's defense under Gene Stallings handle the current Saban offense, right? Like how would LSU last year be stopped by Penn State and their old linebackers with Paterno in the 80s? It just it wouldn't happen, I'm telling you. Right. You know? You, defense is <laughs> it's kind of, I'm not going to say it's not existent. It's, but because it is, uh, we still had a good defense. We still only gave up fifteen, uh, I think, an average of fifteen points a game. Yeah, which under Nick Saban is is, is good, you know. But we were still giving up, you know, it, like the old Miss game, for instance, in Alabama. We gave up. I, I'm, I'm, I think it was about six hundred and fifty yards to them. We we had seven hundred eighty yards. It was the the most yards in an SEC game, and I can't remember how long. It was insane <laughs> what the what the rule was. But, you know, me as an Alabama fan, too, I'm, I'm not used to, I, I wasn't used to that. Jalen Hurts came along, and he's kind of started a little bit to it, you know, added to that. But last year, man, you know, it's – and we've got some debates about where Mac Jones is going to go in the draft, yep. right? Who's – is he really worth a, a first-round pick? And is he worth a top 10 pick? And, and my point to him is I think he's going eight to the Panthers. That's just me. And I think it's because Matt Rule coached him in the senior bowl and Matt Rule really liked him. Now, do I think he's going to be the greatest thing from sliced bread or he's going to be the next Tom Brady? I don't know. Nobody knows that until they get in game time situations. Um, but, you know, with that offense that they had, it, there's not a team. I mean, obviously there wasn't. We won. But I don't think 
there was a team at all who, who wasn't in the playoff, it doesn't matter who it was last year, that could have scored enough points to beat that Bama team from, my, from 2020. All right, let's get into this draft a little bit with these guys. You, you mentioned Mac Jones. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I want to start with him because I heard a comment as we record this. Chris Sims told uh, Dan Patrick that he's been watching a lot. Of, I'm paraphrasing, but he's been watching a lot of you know, tape on Jones. And he thinks he's a better prospect than Tua was coming out. <laughs> what do you think of you that know, comment? Here's the thing. I, heard, I, I, I vaguely heard that, too. I heard this, too. Devontae Smith was asked, out of all three quarterbacks that threw him passes at Alabama, which is Jalen Hurts, yep. Tua Tagovailoa, and, and Mac Jones. And they, I'd have to look back and see who, where this article came from or what video. But it, he asked, the interview asked Devontae, he said, out of all three quarterbacks, which one would you want a pass thrown to you? And without hesitation, he, the guy didn't even give him an option. He said Mac Jones. Hmm. He said Mac Jones. Now, do I think he's better than Tua? The, the kid played 16 games in college. <laughs> but I will say this. He is the most accurate quarterback that I've, that I've personally seen play at Alabama. Now, is he considered a game manager? Mm-hmm. He can sling the ball. I know that. He's not going to kill you with impeccable arm strengths. I mean, he'll throw it 50 yards down the field, but where he's going to get to is he's going to stand in the pocket. He'll move around in the pocket. He's not a mobile guy like Jalen or Tua was, but uh, he's going to stand in the pocket, and he's going to make throws. He's the most accurate quarterback. I, I can't He broke – I think Burrow was pretty accurate last year. I think he had a record. I think Matt Jones broke that in 2020. So, I – don't know. In college, I would say two is better, just because he played more. You know, he had some big moments. You know, he come in in the fourth quarter and won a national championship. But then again, Mac Jones won a championship, went on their feet, and had the best offense in college football. So, I, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll have to see when he gets to the league and kind of see next year too when uh, when Tua gets a full season under his belt. But if I was to say, if if, if you held a gun to my head and said pick between Tua and Mac, um. I pick Mac. We're talking Alabama, SEC. We're talking some NFL draft with the Bama players with one Adam Raymer on Twitter, at Adam Raymer, uh, the number 11. Bama Brawl, of course, is a part of the Brawl Network. And um, go follow Adam on Twitter. Uh, must follow just terrific coverage of the Crimson Tide and the SEC here on the ML Sports Platter brought to you by Empower Federal Credit Union and Bryant and Stratton College. Give me an idea of... And you can just kind of have the stage and go all over the place with this, but give me an idea of where you think these other guys could go. Um, you know, everyone from the offensive guys. You know, you've got Devonte Smith, you've got Waddle. Uh, you know, Patrick Sertain on on defense, who is an absolute stud, um, yep. who probably probably will be a top fifteen twenty type guy. You got Najee Harris. Uh, you, you, you've got a bunch. You've got the kid Christian Barmore, who's excellent. The defensive lineman. What you know? Where are all these guys going? Range, etc. You know, give me give me the state on those on, on the clan there, Adam. Yeah, I'll yeah I'll start with Devonte just because he is the Heisman winner and where I think he's going to go. He's going to go high first round, and high first round to me is top ten. I agree. I could see him right there at seven going to Detroit. Yeah, I, I think. A lot of people kind of criticize his size because he's not real tall and he's not real thick. You know, he's six foot, one hundred and seventy pounds. How's that working for Cole uh, Beasley? Yeah, exactly. How's that working for a lot of people? Everyone, Edelman. Yeah, sure. Calvin Ridley from Alabama. There you is go. Not that big, yeah. but yeah. he was a his route running and hands are amazing. So I think Devontae goes top ten. I don't know where in top ten, but like you said, I think seven's probably a good spot for him. Uh, obviously, with Mac, I said eight. I, I, I think that, but I could see him going. Mac Jones is going to go in the first round. Yep. And and I think that number eight to the Panthers, if he doesn't go there, it's probably in the fifteen range um, to maybe 
I don't know, maybe New England. I, there's a lot of talks about New England, about some other guys going there, but I really think Matt goes number eight. Uh, here's a sleeper for me, and it's Dylan Moses. Oh, yeah. And and that kid came back for his senior year because he got hurt junior year, tore yeah, yeah. everything in his knee, and wanted to prove something when he came back his, his senior year because he could have left, and he was projected a first-round pick then. I think right now he's projected maybe a second-round pick, but that kid's a freaking steal in the second round. I'm just telling uh, everybody. If nobody knows who Dylan Moses is, look him up. Uh, he, oh, he was the best. He, he was, was the best defensive player in football in college football before he went down. Yeah. Period. I mean, yeah. That, that kid in eighth grade looked like a 30 year old man. Yeah, he really did. <laughs> and, and he played, and he played like a 30 year old man. Yeah. So I think uh, with him being in the second round, I still think he goes in the second round. Okay. I don't think he slips into the first, but I think maybe second or third, and if you can somehow get Dylan Moses in the third round, then oh. it's it's a complete and utter steal in the third round. Um, I talked about this. I went on the Bears brawl with our with Mike Brez, and he asked me about Alex Leatherwood. And Alex Leatherwood is a huge six foot six, three hundred and twenty pound. He plays tackle for us, or play tackle for us, um, and he's probably a late first early second I think maybe last year he would have been he came back also but I think he probably would have been a mid first rounder not that he didn't have a great season because he did but I don't think he's going to play tackle in the NFL I think he's going to move to a guard not that he can't play tackle but I think he seats better as a guard uh, and I see him going just a big physical offensive guy his slide step's a little slow. That's why I say he's probably going to move to a guard position mm-hmm. unless he can fix that. So I think he'll uh, he'll end up going late first, early second. Uh, Najee, he's kind of a toss up for me. I think he could go. I think he could be a first round back. I don't think he goes first round though. I think he's second or third round. And everybody, if you watch the playoff games, especially the Notre Dame game. Where he hurdled a guy that was six foot tall. Um, <laughs> yeah. that guy, I, I, I lost it that game. I mean, it was uh, that, when he did that. I that mean, was your moment. Up. Yeah, that was your oh. moment, like my moment when Allen hurdled in the Viking game for me, Josh <laughs> Allen. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah he, had to go clean just, up the pants a little bit there, you know. Oh, it was. I mean, me and my son were sitting here, and we kind of just looked at each other and said that he really. Just hurdle a six foot man, and oh I, he, he did. Uh, but I think he he possesses everything you want in a running back. He's not. He's kind of like Derrick Henry, um, built like him. Not as not as big, but he's he's six two, two hundred and thirty pounds. He's not going to run a four one forty. You know, he he's his longest run in college was fifty five yards. <laughs> um, but he's still. I mean, he had 23 touchdowns on the ground. So yeah. he's powerful, he's shifty, and just a big stout back. So I think first or second round in him. Um, another one I got, and, and you tell me when you want me to stop, buddy, because I can go on and on, but you said Patrick Sertain. Yeah. Patrick Sertain, he's, to me, he's the first defensive back off the list. Okay. Um there's a lot of good defensive backs, but just me watching him, I think he's the first one taken in the draft. I, I would hope. Was, I mean, I think I would hope so because I mean, I think he's actually probably. I mean, again, Alabama, it's unreal. Like you could, you go like four or five different positions. You could argue that they have the best at the position in college football. My my my, my question becomes though, with that is, you know, where does. Dallas want to go at 12, you know, where does De- Denver yeah. might want to go defense? They I mean, Denver could do anything at 9 and they've been mocked at Parsons, the kid out of Penn State, the junior linebacker, they've been mocked with Sertain, they've been mocked at who knows trading down, stockpiling picks, they've been mocked at trading up and getting a quarter. I mean, you know, Elway and those guys could do whatever, who knows what. And you know, the kid Caleb Farley is intriguing out of Virginia Tech too. That that kid's a stud. He's now, really good. Admit, yep. That kid's a stud. He's really good. Uh I don't know. I, I would say if I was picking right now, I'd say he's top ten. Somebody will get him. I think so too. I don't know who, yeah. but where he ends up, I still think he's the first defensive back taken in, in the draft. I don't think anybody goes ahead of him. Okay. He's just um, he's huge too. He's a big kid. 
to play defensive back. And the good thing about him is he kind of plays like Minka Fitzpatrick does. Minka Fitzpatrick played every position you could play in the backfield for us. You know, he played corner, he played nickel, he played star, he played everything. And, and Patrick Chetain is that versatile. Um, I, I, and again, I think he's the first defensive back taken. And this is not me just being a Bama guy, because I am, but I just I truly believe that. Christian Barmore is the other one. He's a first-round pick. Just saying, he's a force on the defensive line. Um, he's He can probably play anywhere. Maybe not nose. He's probably not big enough for that, but mm. anywhere on the outside. And I think he's a first-round pick. You're looking at probably, it, it, if you wanted to get technical, five to seven players from Alabama to go in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> every I mean, every fifth pick, man. I, I mean, it, what, what, what Saban... What Saban has built there with all, I mean, I did a video a couple of weeks ago on, you know, Alabama being, and again, our, our, our guest is Adam Raymer talking Bama uh, football. I got one hoops question to close within a minute, but uh, you can get him on Twitter. Bama Brawl, the Brawl Network, part of that great group that I'm with now as well, at Adam Raymer 11. It's a must follow on Twitter. Um, you know, I did a video on, hey, you know, Bama's running back you, right? Well, well, guess what? They could be wide receiver you, and they could be, I guess, quarterback you now. And, it, you know, it's it's stunning because you look back now and, you know, Ingram won a Heisman, you know, yep. Derrick Henry, and they've got Najee Harris, and now the receivers. And it's mind-boggling, you know, Ridley, Julio Jones, et cetera, all the play now, now this crew coming out, you know, and then you look at the secondary guys, and you look at the offensive linemen. Um, yeah. So le- le- leading to, I got one more on football and then a quick one on, on Nate Oates and basketball. Okay. With, 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 with that being said, with the just the constant football factory and what's been built and Saban getting there and, and Bama wasn't Bama until he got there and convincing kids, you know, at home, you know, the, the Hoovers and other high schools around that area, hey, you know, like, you guys need to come here. We're going to do this now. You know, this is, we're going to build this thing as the best program, and he's completely exceeded expectations. My question is simple. How long does he do this? Well, he signed through 2025, uh, Nick Saban is. Uh, at that time, he'll be, I think, 74, okay. or 75. He has came out and, and multiple times and said that he wants to do this until he can't do it anymore. And the man's in perfect health. You know, he's... Uh, to me, I think... I think Bama fans have till 2025. Wow. So um, we're looking at another – I mean, yeah. he's going to win another two, years. three national championships. It should be in the hunt. By, it's absurd. by the way, too, absurd. Alabama just signed the number one recruiting class ever in the history That's right. of recruiting classes from high school yeah. this year. So yeah. they've got uh, the number four, seven, nine, and a ten receiver coming in. He has seven, world. Adam. He has seven national championships. I mean, if he gets three, I mean, three. Yeah, I mean, dude, he could be in double digits here, brother. I mean, and he's got thirteen. He's got thirteen SEC Wests. He's got yep. nine SECs. I mean, we could be we could be dealing with like ten. 16, 17 ish, and like 12, 13 ish on those numbers by the time how's, we're done. How's, how's, he, how's he not win SEC Coach of the Year every year? That's uh, my question. Exactly. Because you, you could just rename it to the Nick Saban. Well, it's because people, people who don't vote for Nick Saban are the, same oh, people, yeah. are the same people who want a new flavor of ice cream just to try it. You know, they, yeah. they, they just want it, even though they like mint chocolate chip the best, they go to the same ice cream place every week. They're like, oh, I'll just try bubble gum. And then they eat it like, oh, I should have had mint chocolate chip. Well, guess what? You should have voted for Nick Saban. You shouldn't have tried the other ice cream. It, it, it's like it's the same thing that goes on in, in, in sports with the MVPs and all that. But I, right. that's wild, man. I, I could see him going that, I, yeah, fulfilling the contract and maybe even going a couple of years past that. So, um, he could, yeah. It's Very wild. Well. But I think I think we got until 2025 for sure. I think yeah. uh, we, wow. we got a chance to win a couple more and, and see where this goes. So. Yeah, 2025 for sure, maybe a couple years after that. Amazing. And I live in central New York, and obviously, you know, 43 years ago, he was the outside linebackers coach at Syracuse, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, you look at a guy like Nick Saban, you know, and you look at Kent State, you look at Cuse, you look at West Virginia, you look at Ohio State, all the assistant jobs, Navy, Michigan State, into the NFL, out of the NFL, Houston, Toledo, Cleveland Browns, Michigan State. 
and then into LSU, Miami, and now Bama. I mean, he has he had he did climb. I mean, he climbed the ladder. He grinded to get to uh, his head coaching spots, and now he's the greatest to do it in college football history. Final thing for you. Okay. Uh, give me the state of the state on Alabama basketball. I mean, I think Nate Oates is obviously a very, very good coach. Um, I, I loved what he did at UB. Obviously, he had some classics against my alma mater, St. Bonaventure. Um, you know, he's got something brewing there. It is a, it is a football school. You know, I just thought I'd say that in case you didn't know. Um, and it's awfully hard, right, to be like the little brother at, 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 at a football school if you're, if you're basketball and vice versa. Um, are people, though, starting to turn heads? It seems like they are. Uh, I think so. <laughs> I think the same in Juju is wearing off a little bit on the basketball team. Okay. Uh, you know, Alabama athletics as a whole right now is just on Great. fire. Yeah. Or gym, I mean, I, I talk about my podcast all the time. I talk. I, I don't just talk football on mine. I talk basketball, baseball, softball. I even talk gymnastics, swimming. I mean, you can go on and on. But Nate Oates, you know, thank God they backed the Brinks truck up and extended him because mm-hmm. I, I'm still a little pissed off about last night's game yeah. against Arkansas. Um, they, they, Arkansas is a really good team. They won eight straight now, but. Uh, he has us right now ranked six. We're going to drop a little bit with that loss. But you can't tell me the last time that Alabama has been in a national spotlight in basketball. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. And it's not like we've had some bad coaches. I mean, we had Avery Johnson coach us. Sure. Who's an NBA player, played for the Spurs. There was a coach there, too. And, you know, he couldn't. But Nate Oates. The reason he's successful at Alabama, and as, and as a coach in general, and this guy was coaching high school math, what, seven or eight years ago. Mm-hmm. So I think what he's successful is the style of play that he that he coaches. So offensively, it's get down the floor yep. quick, either get a three yep. ball or get to the rim and get fouled. Run and gun, Defense, set the screen, wing it. play, shoot it, score yes. it, get it back, do the same thing again. Yep. 35 he wants 35 three-point shots put up every game, and he wants to get to the foul line. <laughs> Defensively, he said he he gives those guys, he said that in an interview, he gives our guys complete freedom on offense. But if you don't play defense, he said, we're going to take your ass out of there. You know, mm-hmm. if you're not playing defense, you're going to get out. So I think everybody has kind of just rallied around him, and the players have bought into the system. Look, man, we were 4-3 and three to start the season, 4-3. and three. In the first seven games, and now we're eighteen and six. So we, you know, we won ten straight. I think the guy. I, I think I, I said it in my other podcast. I said it before. They needed to back the brink truck up for him, mm-hmm. and they did. They extended him. I think through two thousand and twenty-seven. So, yeah, I think the culture of just Tuscaloosa in general with athletics. It's rubbing off to them, and it's going to start rubbing off to other sports. And I, I really think the football team has a lot to do with that. But those, give credit to Nate Oates, man. He's a great coach. What he did you, uh, with Buffalo and then with us now, I, I couldn't be happier. Well, i got to tell you, I mean, it's smart to utilize the power program because, as you remember, Billy Donovan, when he went to Florida, you know, yep. he had to recruit – out of his behind. I mean, he went out and got Joakim Noah, and he went out and got all those great guards, and he, you know, went out and got Horford, and, um, you know, Torian Green, and all those great, great players, and they won back-to-back titles. But he went to Urban Meyer the first time he was on campus and had time to go pick brains of people in the athletic department. He went right to Urban Meyer, and he said, you know, I want to make this basketball team a power, but I'm utilizing your program. I want to bring big. I want to bring kids to our place to see the basketball, this and that. And that. But I'm going to bring them here on a Saturday against Tennessee, and I'm going to bring them here for all the atmospheres and say it's not just the basketball program where you're going to come and play. In it. It's all of this. You're going to get yeah. all of this. You're going to get this program and our program, yeah. and you're going to meet. You could meet your wife here, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do that. You're going to meet your best friends for life here. These are the atmospheres that are here every single weekend, both sports, other sports, and that is so smart. And I feel like. Alabama is kind of in the same position as Florida used to be with that, with Donovan and Meyer. And I feel like Florida State football under Bobby Bowden, before Leonard Hamilton got there, yeah, it's kind of like that for Nate Oates maybe. You know, hey, kind of utilize that top football program, build the, the, the basketball program with your own style, have people kind of turn heads a little bit, and, and, and kind of boomerang off each other. And I think that's uh, – I think your description's right on with that. Yeah, I think Nate Oates, he, he, he deserves some uh, credit – 
in the National Coach of the Year award. Uh, you know, we weren't great last year, which was his first season there. Uh, and you also got to look at, too, with Nate, you know, he not many of his kids that he's recruited are there yet. And we've had some injuries this year. Uh, Chico, who's a big, huge seven-foot tall center that can shoot the three ball, he's he, he's not going to play all year because of injury. And then we've got some good – we've got a couple of five-star kids coming in next year. So, uh, look out. That's all I can say, uh, you know. Like I said, Bama, Bama football juju is rubbing off onto basketball, and and it's it's a great time to be an Alabama fan. Well, this was awesome. Super happy to have you, Adam. Again, Adam Raymer, at, uh, Adam Raymer Eleven, the host and creator of Bama Brawl for the Brawl Network, part of the uh, ML Sports Platter and all the rest under that umbrella uh, as well. And uh, just doing terrific stuff covering Alabama, the SEC. Talking a little bit of the NFL draft here as well. Adam, appreciate it. Continued success and down the line, anything you need, let me know, man. Hey, man, I appreciate it. The ML Sports Platter brought to you by Liverpool Physical Therapy, Barks and Rack Doggy Daycare, Ken's Auto Detailing, and our great, great friend Brian Comboy of Mass Mutual New York State Tax Efficient Retirement Planning with Brian. Go with him today. Get your financial future in order on LinkedIn, on Facebook. Brian Comboy of Mass Mutual New York State Tax Efficient Retirement Planning today. Visit him at advisors.massmutual.com. Huge thanks to Adam Raymer, the amazing Alabama and SEC insider and podcast host. Really knows his stuff. And, man, Alabama football, I just, how do you beat him? How do you beat Saban right now? How do you beat that football factory? Seems pretty close to impossible. Hit me on Twitter, at Mike L Sports, and all over the social platforms. Be on the lookout for my 9-Minute with Mike Lindsley videos and ML Sports takes as well. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and IGTV. The ML Sports Platter is part of the Brawl Network. And as I always tell you, enjoy the games.